But the story of this video takes place about 1,700 years ago in the 4th century, when most of Western Europe was dominated by the Roman Empire in the twilight of its career. Christianity was starting to become all the rage, and so a bunch of churches started popping up all around the area, including in the town Vindimium, or er, Le Mans. After some time, a guy called Liborius became the bishop there, and he did all three things that made him into a successful bishop. Building churches, appointing priests, and dying. About four and a half centuries later, in 836, the Frankish Empire, also in the twilight of its career, brought the bodies of a couple saints over from the west to the east. The city of Paderborn was in need of a patron saint, and so received our old pal Laborius. Le Mans and Paderborn then determined that the other was actually pretty cool and that they should totally hang out again sometime. So from then on, their two churches helped each other regarding various religious stuff, in order to claim the title of the first ever sister cities by a technicality. And you know, I've been thinking about a way to escape this exile by using sister cities to my advantage. No instantaneous teleportation needed. But let me fill you in on the details first. Today, cities don't really become sisters for the same religious reasons as Paderborn and Le Mans back then. Nowadays, a majority are partnerships between two different cities, often in different countries, that exist to create more connections in trade, tourism, culture, work abroad, not killing each other, all that good stuff. Its first modern form was created when Coventry linked up with Stalingrad, now Volgograd, in 1944, and later with Dresden in 1956. Or at least what was left of them. All three endured heavy bombing campaigns during World War II, and concluded that they should help each other recover. And the world agreed, because over time, sister cities started popping up all around the world. It's often difficult for cities in the same country to work together due to them having two dissimilar populations, geographies, climates, or even cultures and histories. At times, it's easier to work together with a city on the other side of the world, since even if their cultures are different, if they're of the same scale, then they'll have similar interests. It's why big fish look for other big fish and small fry look for other small fry. But sometimes, cities link up for reasons that are a lot simpler. Chicago and Warsaw due to Chicago's large Polish-speaking population, Cologne and Rio de Janeiro because of their love for carnivals, Toledo and Toledo because they're both called Toledo, and best of all, the partnership between the French town of I and the Welsh town of Chanvaerbuschwingerschogerkwendobberschnellesiliagogogog. Listen, politicians have the most boring jobs in the world, so I think we should let them have this one because it's the only fun they'll ever have. Speaking of fun, let me tell you about an example that I'm pretty fond of. Some of you have already figured out that I live in Belgium, and over here there's a city known as Hasselt. It's a city of about 80,000 inhabitants, and it looks like what you'd expect of a mid-sized European city. Pretty buildings, walkable streets, and... whatever that is. But in the northeast, you can find a spot that's suspiciously not very European. This is the Japanese Garden of Hasselt, the biggest Japanese garden in Europe, and a place I've been to a couple times because it's pretty. The reason why this is here is because Hasselt is a sister city of the Japanese city of Itami, and so the garden was built by gardeners from Itami in the 90s. In return, Hasselt gave Itami a Carillon Tower, which is a tower that uses the Carillon instrument to play the bells in the tower. Admittedly, I feel like Itami got the short end of the stick here, but it's a cute relationship regardless. A tale of two cities, I mean cities. So now that you know what sister cities are, let me tell you about my master plan. If there are truly so many sister cities around the world, then how about we make a link between the exile and another place? If we can make the exile a sister city of another city, say for cultural exchange, then I can organize a meeting on the island to keep them busy, and then escape with the boat or plane they came here with while they're not looking. This has literally no way of backfiring whatsoever and is perfectly soundproof, and I know just a person to call who would get easily fooled by such a plan. Yo, green guy, how you been, man? It was written on one of the monitors in your spaceship that was conveniently off-screen. Anyways, have you ever heard of sister cities? Just say yes. Great, I think that your horde or whatever and my exile should become sister cities in order for our true location to have some very important cultural exchanges, don't you think? So you should get over here so we can have a discussion about it. Bye! <laughs> and now that idiot will jump at the opportunity to kidnap me again. Ah, the perfect crime. But since they're called sister cities, my he slash him pronouns aren't enough. Let's swap the she slash her in trans pride and prepare for the arrangement. In actuality, the term sister cities is mostly used in the US, while the term town twinning is more often used in Europe. Meanwhile, the rest of the world uses a confusing combination of both, because the Americans and us can never settle on anything, can we? We're the best at having first world problems. But I'm gonna return to the European perspective, because in Europe there's a lot more weight put on town twinnings, measured in grams. 
Similar to stuff like the European Union or Eurovision, town twinning is another thing that Europe uses to make sure that we all stay interconnected and don't start killing each other again. Hell, the EU even has a 28-way twinning between a city of every country plus the UK called the Duzelage. So you know, I guess the Brits are still with us in spirit. Also remember that link between Coventry and Volgograd? They've actually recently broken up due to the war in Ukraine, as well as many other twins between Russia and Europe. You know, just in case I needed to further hammer in how important of an event the war is when it tore apart the reason why sister states exist in the first place. This is like 9-11 but for Zoomers. So yeah, for Europe, town twinning is serious diplomatic business. And because of that, we do the classic European thing of adding another layer of complexity. Internationally, cities usually pair up when the mayors of each agree to do so, after which the pairing is recognized by Sister Cities International. But Europe also has the Council of European Municipalities and Regions, or SEMER. It's a non-profit organization which promotes twinnings between specifically European cities. Even the smallest towns have multiple pairings with other European towns. Thankfully, the SEMER has also laid down their 10 keys to success for a successful twinning, so I can go ahead and skim through these to make sure that my plan is complete completely soundproof. First key, find the right partners. Sister cities need to make sure that they are both similar to each other, otherwise it might be difficult to relate or work together equally. Try to have similar amounts of inhabitants, geographies, economies or histories. Well, I don't know about all that other stuff, but we do share some history, aka two videos, so I'm sure it'll work out. Second key, involve the citizens and the whole community. It's not just the politicians that need to keep the twinning alive, it would be best if sport or cultural organizations work together as well. It makes it so that everyone is involved in the twinning, making its benefits visible to the population. Okay, well this place only has a population of... two. But hey, I can do all sorts of stuff, they don't call me extra for nothing. Third key, include a European dimension. Are you European? So I assume that means yes. Fourth key, define common objectives. What do the cities even want to achieve by being twinned? More trade? More tourism? More annoying paperwork because we all hate ourselves anyways? Whatever it is, it's important to make sure that both cities are on the same page and work together to achieve those objectives. Okay, well, we didn't define that at all. But since we both have malicious intentions, it doesn't really matter. Fifth key, create a support structure. Oftentimes, partners who at first felt butterflies in their stomachs will lose that spark they once had. In this situation, both of them must put in the effort to keep the relationship alive. So have a team of people who will keep their pairing alive once the hype for it dies down. Although in the end, I guess it doesn't matter because most sister cities are polygamous anyway. Well, I plan to break up the relationship immediately, so tough luck. Sixth key, work with schools and young people. You can involve both teachers and students by having them exchange with the students of the sister city, which is often done to promote each other's languages. It's kind of like what the Erasmus program does, but most people in there just speak English anyways, and I honestly don't blame them. A couple years ago, I was in a German class where we had an online exchange with the German speakers of Eupen Malmody. It was one of the worst conversations of my life. Seventh key, address the major issues of our day. Town twinnings can be a great opportunity to make citizens of both towns aware of problems such as climate change or human rights violations through events that the twins could hold. But hey, if the only event that we will hold is called Help Extra Escape from Exile, then yeah, I think that supports a fundamental human right. Eighth key, plan a sustainable relationship. Similarly to what we talked about in the fifth key, sister cities can only stay alive if they support each other throughout the entire ordeal. When a natural disaster strikes one of the two cities, for example, it's often the cities they are twinned with that will come to their aid the most, which creates a relationship of trust. Oh yeah, it'll be sustainable, alright, if you remove the attainable. Ninth key, look to the future and build the basis for new exchanges. Some cities might be more experienced in a certain field than the city they are paired up with. Sharing the know-how between each other ensures that cooperation will be easier in the future and that new projects can be made that weren't able to be made before. Well, I'd sure like to know how they're all able to breathe in space without a helmet, but that could've helped me 11 videos ago when I suffocated. Not a pleasant feeling, I'll tell you that much. And 10th key, develop a budget and look after the finances. I don't have ads on. Dang it. And those are the 10 keys to become a good sister city. And I feel like I could have read all of that on a 10 tips for dating article and I wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. Oh, there they are. Time to invite them inside. So, now you know all about sister cities. 
While researching, I looked up the effects of the relationship between the place where I live and its twins, and I found out that the building that I had been in multiple times was actually gifted to us by a sister city, which I didn't even realize. So I think there's a lot of merit to finding out which cities or towns are paired up with the place where you live, and the effect it has had. You might be surprised. If you want, you can leave a comment telling everyone all about that relationship between your place and the other place. Yeah, please leave a comment. The more comments I get, the more I get boosted in the algorithm. Please, I need this. Please, please.